Hello Pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil and today we have some Rebels on Separatist action. Uh, two players who haven't actually been down to the store for a while finally graced us with their presence. But talking about someone who we haven't seen commentating for a while, only destroying every single list I bring to the table, we have... Uh, howdy folks, it's Ben. Glad to be back. It's been a while since I've been on, so it's always enjoyable getting a bit of commentary action. So it's always great to have you either on the table or on the commentary side of things. I think the last yeah, time... Yeah, I don't actually climb on the tables because that would be bad sportsmanship. I mean, they, they are quite sturdy tables though, so they might support our weight, but, but best not to. Um, but... Again, we have a game, we have Scramble the Transmission, Rebels versus the Separatist. So I think it's probably a good idea if we have a quick look at those lists. Did you want to let us know what Connor is bringing to the table? Yeah, so Connor has gone for three B-Wings and an E-Wing. Nice to see an E-Wing in play. I haven't seen them for a while. So yeah, no. we've got Hera with Marksmanship, Fire Control System, Auto Blasters. The stabilized S foils with the um, B6 blade wing prototype and Sabine Ren gunner. The 10 number marksmanship fire control system, auto blasters, ion torpedoes, and stabilized S foils. And Brian with marksmanship fire control system, auto blasters, and stabilized S foils. And Garvin Darklighter with marksmanship pattern analyzer. Fire control system, homing torpedoes, R3, and munitions failsafe. That is a lot of upgrades. It's a lot of upgrades, and again, yes, it's really nice to see E-Wings on the table. Obviously, eagle-eyed viewers out there will notice that Connors is definitely an extended list, not just for the E-Wing, but for those darn auto blasters that he's brought on his B-Wing, which is a favoured tactic of his. But on the other side, we have Madbots running the bots. We've got General Grievous in the Bell Up with marksmanship, proton rockets, impervium plating as Solus One. Two HMPs with DGS-286 with the multi-missile pods Kalani and Repulsor Stabilizers. The Ondron Oppressor with multi-missile pods, proximity mines, delay fuses and the repulsor lift stabilizers. Four Vultures with the Iron Assembler leading the crew with Discord missiles and grappling struts and three Corraldo AI holdouts, all with Predator and Energy Shell Charges. Energy Shell Charges are really good and that's I like the fact that he's got those on there. They're a cheap upgrade that just do really well. So we have the double tapping, hard hitting B wings versus mm. so many ships. So yeah, it's a lot of ships, but there is a lot of firepower on Connor's list, and initiative could play a massive part here. Absolutely, I mean, all of Connor's ships will be shooting before every single one of Madbots except for Grievous. So there is a lot of potential for initiative killing and taking those ships off the board, especially with their ability to double tap. Um, it's going to be make them quite efficient. Against this many ships, most lists would find that quite daunting, but I think the B-Wings possibly are going to have a have some good luck with this, especially with Gavin Darklighter in there, because he is surprisingly good at support with his ability. So I'm just bringing it up, but basically if he has the defender in his forward arc, then you may change one hit to a crit. Which when you're shooting with auto blasters is absolutely incredible. Mm. So it's a very bad boss has got a scary list to come up against. Interesting to see. So did Connor place his fours first? He did place his fours first. Interesting and... choice of position for Grievous then. I think Grievous is in a very scary position because Grievous generally probably would have been preferred to be on the other side of the board. 
Yeah. One thing that looking at is the he, setup. Is he going to turn in or bait? I mean, he could be baiting. Yeah. He'd go really fast behind the droids. Because Grievous really likes to be on the side. He's he's a massive flanker. He yeah. loves coming in at the side with the impervious one, soulless one, his ability. He likes to be on the side, getting those re-rolls when he's not in the defender's arc. Um, obviously, he can't have outmaneuver anymore, which, you know what? No. She, she makes him more of a... I think it makes him a little bit more versatile because you, you can build what? him in different ways. I, I really think Grievous doesn't miss it. I, I, I think... As, as you said, outmaneuver was the staple thing, so everyone just put outmaneuver on. But now you're seeing so many different choices. I mean, it's interesting that he's got proton rockets on. That's quite spicy. But um, generally, you can fit a shield, like a shield upgrade, make him really tanky, or um, if you want to make him really fun to fly, afterburners, because mm. then he can double reposition. Absolutely, Afterburners is, is absolutely incredible on Grievous. Shield upgrade is scary. That's just making that, Grievous yeah. more unkillable. I mean, a ship that size that's already seven hit points with Solus One is... Yeah, it's uh, in just, previous plates in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just basically going, oh, what's that? You've hit me. No, thank you. I don't like that because it's... Um, pilot card is it they can basically just discard a pilot card when it comes out or is it a ship card you know i've flown grievous a few times and i always forget which way around it's it is a there. ship i believe i'm gonna double check i'm having to scroll quite far down to find the last time i flew separatists um So yeah, Impervium plates it before you'll be dealt a face-up ship damage card, you may spend one charge to discard it instead, which is great to get two charges. Um, but yeah, I mean, he normally is a good flanker, and something else I've spotted whilst obviously editing this, getting ready for commentary, is that both players set up at the bottom half of the board. Now this is scramble the transmission, so it's all about capturing those objectives. Yeah, no one's no one's going for the far right. That's why I'm surprised that, um, like Grievous didn't set up on them. I mean, just for Madbox has got a plan, and it might be that Grievous still shoots around the back. But yeah, there's an objective on the far right up for grabs. I mean, even we wonder if anyone's going to peel off and take it. Yeah, like Grievous could have set up at the top, or even Gavin Darklighter, because it's not like he has to worry about how close he is for his yeah. target lock being an E-Wing. I and do, he, I do have... think that Madbots has got the better position for objectives. Um, Connor is quite... I, I, I mean, Connor's probably maybe playing the I'm just going to murder ships. Um, very, very viable tactic. Um, so it'd be interesting to see the different play styles if Madbots is going to go right. I'm going to claim objectives. Um, I mean, he, he's ideally placed for those objectives. Yeah. You've got two droids on both of those asteroids that are within range one of the objectives. So he can just go, oh, you took it last turn. All right, I'll take it again. Mm. And you either waste an action to take it or I keep it and get a point. So he's... It's a very, very handy thing, and that's where I think Vulture Droids can come in handy. They're all two points a piece as well. They are dirt cheap, those Vulture Droids. Mm. So, if he loses, if if they can hold those objectives for two turns, they've made their own points. If Codder suddenly deletes one, that's absolutely fine. Madbots is not going to be too disappointed about that, especially if Connor doesn't actually take the objective anyway. They were so, ion torpedoes would be quite funny. Iron in a, tor uh, a droid off the rock. Yeah. But that would actually be pretty good because they have to do their one forward yeah. off the rock. Then. So that's definitely one way of getting off the rock. You can trap to them off a rock as well, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, Ion would be much more fun because as well, you'd get that one damage 
and then they're ioned. So, but again, he's set these vultures up in a really nice position just to basically turn them into mobile turrets, capture those objectives, and saying, right, Connor, where are you going to go? I've got some good covering arcs here. And again, he gets those calculates on there, and he, if he can save those calculates, there's three energy shell charges he could be throwing out there. That's not something to turn your nose up at, because those energy shell charges are surprisingly good. Yeah. And then, obviously, we keep talking about the vultures. He's still got two HMPs sat in behind as well. And those are some tanky ships. So he can, like, Madbots can literally afford to keep those vultures where they are, rotate them as needed, send those HMPs in to cause mayhem, especially if he can get Bullseye with those multi-missile pods, drop a Prox Mine in there. He's in a nice position. That's a nice line for Garvin. Leading the attack. If so, many, so, many, so many tools you can put on an E-Wing. I like the way you can customize your E-Wing. Yeah. So the difference between having R3 and R4, I mean, if you have R4, it Dial really becomes, changes the way they fly. They, they become such a versatile ship when you've got R4 because... You get the blue one hot? Uh, yeah. They basically have, like the bluest dial in the game mm. um, it is really cool but at the same time R3 I do... is hard to ignore as well yeah yeah R3 is very hard to ignore because getting too locked it... straight away yeah outside of range outside of um, range one so and I, again the experimental scanners I I think that's a really good ship upgrade obviously you can basically get a lock as long as you're outside of range one, you can get a lock. And it's... By the time you finally get into being at range one, you're probably not going to want to be taking locks at that point. You're probably going to be looking at barrel rolls and um, boosts to, like... Double mods. Yeah. So, it is pretty good. It's, um... I know you don't see it as much now because it's gone up in points, but it's a really strong counter against false transponder coach. Yes, because you can trigger that early. Yeah, so you just you spend all those points on false transponder codes and you're losing it in the first turn of the game. It's going to be interesting to see when Ewings become standard in the game how much that happens. And I would, I would, for one, love to see Ewings be standard back in the game because yeah. I think I love they they're quite a marmitey ship, but I actually think they're brilliant. I think the, my biggest reservation with them is they are quite expensive. I mean, I love Corrin Horn. He's six points, though, and I'm not sure if he's quite worth the six points just because he can, every other turn, double tap. But you do get a really good loadout on them. Gavin has an 18-point loadout, and Corrin yeah. Horn has a 20-point I, mean, I mean, their stat line's solid. Yeah. I mean, even the generics, the Rogue Squadron and the Nave Squadron are still pretty good because it's 12 and 14 points respectively on their loadout for them. And yes, you don't get their pilot abilities, but you still get um, a sensor slot, astromech mod and a torpedo. So you can still put a fair bit of stuff on there. But let's, we're going to have some shots coming in. Can you fire get... a homing torpedo? Mm. don't know if it'd be worth a fire a homing torpedo on a droid. No. Probably save it, try and save it for Grievous. Either save it for Grievous or save it until that droid's only got one health. Because right now, Madbots will just go, all right, I'll take one. And he's got the Iron Assembler right there. So you could just turn around and say, you're okay, thank you. I think doing a regular attack, which, that, not Ooh. a great roll. Not good. 
Good job we got that target lock. And that's a bit better, so then Gavin triggering his ability. And then the droid just saying no thank you. Oh, nice. I mean, I suppose with the homing talks, if Madbot's made Connor roll it, he would have only had two evades, but yeah. In the long run, that was a good result there. The only shot back does no damage. Braylon was very close to being in range there. Um, but yeah, early two points there for Mad Boss, as we said. So, if you were going up against Connor's list, what would you try and kill first? It's a really tough question. Gavin Darklight I mean, is a great support with his ability. Yeah, I mean, if I had the opportunity, obviously I'd try and kill him. I, I think I'd try and kill Hera first. Um, I mean, Hera's because her support one. is pretty incredible, but she's obviously going to be sat at the back. Yeah. Could be difficult to get a hold of. Ooh. Okay, I'll oh, just, just rotate. Just rotating. Um, yeah, so Hera, for her support, is one to take out. I mean, I don't know. I don't know whether she's that good in a B wing. She's I mean, I... a lot better in an A wing, I think. Yeah, I I can see why Connor's got her in the B wing because obviously... I think with the A wing, you did generally don't tend to need the tokens. No. Uh, um, whereas Hera probably would like to keep a focus for herself. Either. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, but I think it's more the thematism here that he's going for. I think for me, I'd be looking at Gavin or probably Pennum. Oh, takes it being the two I give up. Oh, not good. Well, he's got loads of health, so that's fine. Yeah. I think for me, Gavin or Gavin or Tendum is the first one I'd want to take out. Um, the ion torpedoes pose a bit of an issue and also his spending of the stress to um, basically spend it like a focus is better than Braylon's re-rolling um, in yeah. my opinion and then again Gavin with his ability just to trigger those additional crits especially with the auto blasters I mean range one auto blaster in bullseye from any of these three with Gavin in arc and then suddenly, that ship sort of just getting deleted there. So, I think, yeah, Gavin or Ten would be where I'd be concentrating on first. Um, I'd have been tempted to... when Grievous turning in so hard there. Really, yeah, interesting that Grievous is right in the mix there. I kind of he's he's going to be very limited to where he's going to go. Yeah. Uh, essentially, the only place he could really go unless he hards away is in the jaws of this rebel lot he's not in an ideal position for what he wants to do and Connor is being incredibly aggressive there just having a look like Braylon's arc means that he can shoot any ship there and looking at Gavin's arc I think he catches all ships as well. I, I think it'll be just that back vulture that Gavin doesn't quite catch, so he'll be just able to add crits to any shot that they have, but they could just focus down that little bundle of vultures and HMP in the middle. And here comes Hera just to grab a focus, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think you just grab a focus. And you can pass it to her when he needs it. It's a good job that the B Wing can't take crew, otherwise, I would. Oh, take slot. Well, can still pass that. So. Yeah. Can still pass that along. But it's a good job that, um, as I said, the B Wing can't take crew, because otherwise, you'd be putting Perceptor Co pilot on there and having two oh, folks. Oh, yeah. Should be incredible, but that's—is that actually from Hera? 
I believe it is. So, oh, just taking a step back to drop some discords, some buzz droids. But looks like Harry used fire control system to continue with the focus. We've got a hit threat coming in there onto the yellow Coroldo. I think this is one of this is only the second time that Madbots has actually played Separatist. Despite his name, he's only just bought into them. See, Yellow has to say about this. She's mm -hmm. taking a crit. Spend the calculate. Oh yeah, could spend the could spend almost any of those calculates there. I did, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Spend the bat one. And yeah, not having to spend your own because Yellow's got the slightly better options. Well, actually, he's only got Gavin, but he's still got a slightly better shot than the others with the range there, so. Definitely worth that. Oh, Grievous not got a shot in there. He will have a shot, Garvin. Maybe. It's going to be close. Looks like that will reach. Oh, no, just, just out. Shame for Grievous. Just out of arc of Braylon and out of range of Gavin. Oh, looks like a lock being swapped there for Braylon. I think that's on yellow. So taking Harry's lock. Uh, So that was a uh, fire control system and Braylon's reroll there, so not spending the lock because he's stressed. Mm, and spend a token. Yep. Oh, he's doing well at soaking up this damage so far. Yeah, two B wing shooting and no damage through. I mean, but not here... great red dice. No, but here come the auto blasters. Reroll. Those rerolls are not doing well for him, and no. that's the Gavin switch. And auto blasters, he cannot. Can't change that because he's um, not got Braden in arc. So that is a crit going through. The stabilizer. Not really going to affect the droid, to be honest, as long as he stays on that obstacle. So Gavin's going to see if he can actually finish off that Vulture Droid finally. Oh, Not like that. These no. red guys. <laughs> oh. I feel kind of bad because they're using my dice. That's... Not bad. That's better. So, oh, having to spend his own calculate there. That is another crit going through on yellow. As long as it's not a direct hit, and it is not a direct hit, but didn't blinded pilot. So, not too bad. I was just thinking with Gavin, his setup is actually really good because he's obviously got marksmanship and his own ability. He can change two to crits. Oh, crits yeah. uh, Ten does not have a good shot on yellow. It looks like it's going to go into the blue 
Corrado and see if he has better luck against that blue one there. You can do it clearing a vulture hack here to even the scores at the end of this round. Otherwise, mad bots will, will start. Oh, more bad dice. Oh dear. That is. There, there's the evade. I do kind of feel bad for Connor there because um, wow. he, he is using my dice as well. Oh, so that did go through? I thought he got the evade. Well, there is a damage through on the Corrado. It is a crit. Unfortunately, he waved it in front of the screen so quickly I didn't actually catch what it was. But it is now time for the Separatists to unleash their volley. And Connor's done really well in stripping a lot of those calculates. So there's not going to be as many energy shell charges as... Madbots probably would have liked. Send Braylon with the reroll, so that is one shield on Braylon. Is it going to have to be death by a thousand cuts? At this rate, it looks like it's going to be that case. The mm. uh, red light. Um, not the red light. Is not, they're not doing very well. Sorry, guys. Uh, you can use your own red dice next time. Well, I mean, at least at least it evens it up. You don't feel as bad if both sides have bad yeah. dice. Nothing worse than, and obviously I know it's a dice game, and we 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 try not to say that like bad dice luck but it does happen but there's nothing worse if your dice are running super cold and your opponents are running super hot because it's, it's just it can be very frustrating and wow another miss these red dice really need to go into a sauna or something more focuses spending all of the calculates there Oh, there's, there's a crit. Rerolling. Oh, that reroll. So good. That was um an interesting round of shooting there. Wow. Yeah. One only, damage only... on a B wing, and not um, much on the other side either. Yeah, four points of damage from all of those ships throughout that whole but shooting phase. This turn will get pretty violent. This is going to get very messy. Um, now, does Madbots... Seeing if he stays... He's got a great opportunity to... Oh, there's more viewings. Where do they appear from? Um, does he stay on the rocks? He's got great opportunity to block. Um these um, ships. Yeah, I mean, he does have a good opportunity to block the B-Wings. I mean, I'd be tempted you can with block, he, could, he, he could get aggressive with the... Um, well, the, yeah, the HMPs could the do The HMPs, actually. yeah. I'd push them forwards and leave the droids on the rocks. I mean, you could do... It's Grievous' turn. I'm a bit yeah. worried about. Like a two or three forward with the red HMP and... A bank with the blue sticks him right, sticks them right in the middle, forces those B wings to bump, and then suddenly those vultures have some seriously good shooting to their name. Rotating yellow. I think that's the right call. Yeah. I really think that is the right call. Now you've got just so many. That's. Such a brutal kill box in the so middle there. Nice, yeah, it's a nice little, nice little box there. It's, I don't know. He's just not a side slip. He's just yeah. That's yeah. I like that move. I mean, that blocks off the one bank. Yeah, I'm just wondering. So it's going to bump blue. 
I'm wondering if they, they should have crossed over like that. I always think that red should have just gone forward and then blue banged in. They've got the 180 arc, so they still have everything. Oh no, they did bump. Okay, I thought he bumped. Yeah. Alright, I take it all back. Like, that's not too bad. i tell you what, if it, oh, it'd be nice if Blue could leapfrog forwards and drop a proxy mine. Right in the uh -oh. middle. That would be quite good. I think yellow's probably not long for this world. Hitting those, hitting those buzz droids, should they be... Should they attach? Yeah, I was about to say, they should be attaching yeah. to... Yeah. yeah, I think they're going to... They're probably going to do it in a minute. He's got it in his hand. On the front. Yeah. We just find them quite quite fiddly. It's quite a quite an awkward yeah. joke card because it's very long. Don't tend to use this card myself much. Repositioning his barrel there. And back and forth, I'm not entirely sure what's happening there. Ah, uh, so I think uh, what's happening is someone is explaining more about how the discords work because, yeah. I mean, they're not, we don't see them very often. And hopefully, someone will correct me in the comments later, but I think. Because he's barrel rolled, does that actually dislodge them? Really not sure with this. Like, again, you just don't see them very often. I think more people take energy shells rather than discords because energy shells are just generally better. I wonder if his map box is remembered. Kalani. Oh, it's quite an, quite an easy thing to rem forget. So, if an enemy ship executes a maneuver and it's in a bullseye of a friendly ship, uh, uh, you can basically gain a lock on it. Unfortunately, I think he has missed that trigger a couple of times. It's quite easy to miss, especially with a lot of ships. But yeah, it could be very powerful to get a free lock. I mean, it does give you a stress, but. Worth it though. I mean, if you've already, especially, yeah. with, especially with the lower initiative. Yeah, and you think you're, the you're then getting double modified energy charge shells and multi missile pods, etc. Because I'm pretty sure Braylon is in. Braylon is in Red's. The Red's bullseye, bullseye. yeah. And Although Red's not... stressed, so. Wouldn't have been able to acquire a lock. Oh, no, maybe maybe he did acquire the lock and we just missed it whilst we're looking at other things, because if he is stressed, that would oh, have been Oh, yeah, there's quite a few locks out. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe he is doing it. Um, and it looks like there might actually be a lock on Gavin there as well yeah. from Blue. Okay. So, but we have... Again, shot... cold dice. Yeah, straight into the oh. sheet. This is not what... Ooh, taking your damage there, or I mean, do, or, I mean, I'd probably take a damage here. Yeah, I, I'd take that damage and see. Especially on a, especially on a um, HMP. Yeah, you've got. He's got seven yeah. health now. Yeah. Oh no! We'll to use that calculate for another defense. Comes. The auto right. blasters. 
Oh, the oh, evade seal. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. So I think he did actually trigger Kalani there, but I think a few more ships might have been able to get some... Get some target locks there. Unfortunately, I think most of Madbot's ships are kind of... I don't think he can get a mass amount of fire onto one particular ship. No, I mean, it looks like he can get... So three... this is Grievous. Yeah, this is Grievous Again, on the gap. only one hit. Oh, but, but it goes go through. through. Not, not too I think bad. I've yet to see two hits rolled on the first roll. Let's see yeah. what Gavin, Gavin should be able to do some work here. I mean, again, Mark's range on Mark's ship and his ability. I mean, that's not great. That will do it, though. Yeah, that will do it, so... Be two points, yep. That will do it. That's the yellow finally down. He has taken so many shots into him. So that is not too bad, but being the Corrado holdout, he does get to pass his calculator across. I mean, Connor can probably take out Boo here as well. I mean, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't take out Blue with two B wings, one with a lock on, one with a lock on that one as well. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't take it out. And two two droids down with only one damage in return on a B wing is going to be a bit of a oh. firepower struggle. Oh, that's a good hit. That's three damage. That's that's really nice. Gavin is not in art, but Mark's the ship Mark's is on. And no this is a really, really good no list to, go, to play salvage. Natural triple evades. Yeah, I mean this is this is a great this is a great anti good salvage, salvage bit, list. Yeah. But, but triple evades there. Definitely a crit going through. Ooh. How? How is that AI holdout <laughs> held out so well? These, so these just have been ridiculous. Uh, which, mean, which means he's got to put another ship. Oh, no, he can shoot in green. No, he's going into the iron assembler now because that's where he's got his lock. And okay. Spend oh, the two, spend the calculates. You don't, don't leave those calculates. No, so even... just the one damage. Because he, he can be used in a moment to heal up that holdout. <laughs> Again! Those vultures are just taking those hits so well. I mean, you, you expected at least two vultures to go down that round. Mm. And now we have multi-missile pod shenanigans coming in. DGS going in to Braylon. But Braden doing Braden, but Braden not doing well, so that's two. Doesn't have much else that can shoot at Braden though, he's got one vulture that could put some damage in, which is not ideal. He's Blue into Gavin there. 
Is it multi missile pods? Yeah. Because he's got good balls. Oh, Ooh, Gavin not rolling well. No, that's all shields down on Gavin. But yeah, Ooh. using those, using that bullseye to maximum effect to spend two additional charges to roll extra dice there. Is this energy shell charges? Yes, it is. Energy shell charges into Gavin. Oh, 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 oh. Go easy. Nice. Can you see Gavin down there? I think mean, Gavin's still got a focus. Oh, oh. triple evade again. Wow. Gavin um, was worried then. Oh, I thought I thought Gavin was in a lot oh. of trouble. <laughs> Looks like blue is sensing some coolant in the. Astro Field and going for it there with another energy shell charge into Finn. Hit crit, not bad. It's a hit crit going. Oh, he's got the focus, so Just a it's crit. a crit going through. It's a wounded pilot. Final shot of the round, we have the Iron Assembler, looks like... I'm not sure, does he have Arc? Laser coming up. Mm, that looks close. Very close. Looks like they deemed he does have Arc there. Oh, lovely. That's a one nine. Nine. <laughs> Yeah. Just the one, but that is all shields down on Braylon. Uh, another two points to Madbots there. So, although he's lost one Vulture, he's definitely more than earned his points back off that. So, this is actually not too bad for Madbots here, I don't think. Yeah, you could do with killing... I mean, killing Garvin, while he's still got ships on the board, that'd be... Having all Braylon going down, is that's five points apiece on either of those. That'd be some really good points for him. Now, I will just quickly point out, this is going to be the last turn for this game. Um, just because we were getting against very end of the night in store and uh, the guys there would like to go home so this is going to be the last round but it's still pretty much on a knife edge either player can actually take this you got like two of the vultures are damaged if madbox holds both objectives at the end of this Okay, just... So I'd be tempted to uh, I don't know, just try and disengage with Garvin. I wonder if he can fit in a bank left, squeeze past that vulture and potentially claim that objective. It looks like he could. Depends if he wants to get aggressive. Two bank, two banks to the left, you're thinking? Yeah. Ooh. If he does do that... The problem he... is, is the the 180 arcs that these yeah HMPs have got so you, it is the 180 arc on those is absolutely solid see where Braylon is going A lot slower than I expected. He's trying to but get this. Oh, okay. Trigger that objective. Okay. Ooh. Good. A dangerous, dangerous position to see yeah. someone do that. Gonna 
unfortunately have to mark up that HMP just because it's Braden too... has lost his shield. Mm. That's dangerous with Garvin still being on the board. Yeah, mm. so Hemdub oh, no. is Right, yeah. I think it's already else there. Garvin's on the same <laughs> Garvin's on yeah, the same team. <laughs> but I mean being sat there does that HMP catch with the 180? You've got two vultures there. Ten's got to take out one of those vulture droids, otherwise Braylon is not in a is in a terrible place. I mean he cause... should be okay taking out blue, but uh, yeah. the way this is going defense wise, you never know. He's uh, probably a range one. Nice range one shot. Yeah. Now, where's Grievous going? That is the question. Is he going to hard turn and try and go in behind and t take out Braylon and add to the shots there, or is he going to go after Gavin? Gavin's bumped. Gavin, Gavin didn't go very fast at all. He's actually bumped. Ooh. He must have been doing the one forward to keep that bullseye on. <clears throat> Be interesting to see where Grievous goes. Uh, I think they've just moved Hera too early. They, yeah, they've they skipped Grievous and moved Hera early. Oh, yeah, very okay. aggressive with Grievous. He's got a lot of gun yet, so yeah, I think Braylon is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Braylon's in a lot of trouble. Grievous just needs to go straight into Braylon first. That's yeah. target priority number one. All of his... And does he take the focus and go proc it? Mm, yeah, I would... Uh, I mean, it's tempting, but I probably would stick to Braylon. Do that range one into Braylon or go for. Oh, I, so mean, yeah. I mean, Braylon. the focus is yeah. tempting, but I would prioritize killing a ship and making sure Braylon dies. More of A's there, so Hera not doing much at all. I mean, the thing, the thing for Connor is, with this being now the last turn, even if he takes out those three. Which is a tall order. If he takes up those three um, vultures, there's still not a lot of points. Yeah, so they're going to get a point each for the objective. Yeah. So he would need three points to draw from somewhere. So I don't think he needs. Yeah, a vulture wouldn't be enough. He can't. And it's more than likely that Braylon might die. Yeah. Oh, look at all those crits there. Bullseye, Gavin, ouch. So that is... That is the AI holdout, the white one at the top, down. There's two points. Good start. So, if he can kill Blue without Braylon dying, he wins, right? Go to a draw. No, draws. Yeah. It'll be a draw. Let's have a quick look then. So, Raider has those shot. 10 down. Ooh. <sighs> yeah, that's that vulture dead. But yep. Connor, Connor just wants to make sure he's drawing. Just making sure it is double dead. Yeah. I can, I can actually hear Madbots in the corner here going, he's already dead. He's already dead. You don't need to do the things. He is already dead. He's just making up for his... Um, yeah. His, very, very, very dead. His, his bad dice at the start. He was like, right, I'm going to make sure I get the most out of these dice now. There we go. So that's blue down. So the right. points are level. Now... One, le one less ship shooting into Brogan. Braylon needs to survive potentially three shots coming into it. 
I think is that Hadrian, 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 Hadrian Beam might be out, out of arc, yeah. It's, it's, you can't really see from this angle, but... Yeah, it, it's hard for this angle, but I, I get it. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, how many dice is Grievous rolling? It sh if he's going in, it's four dice. Oh, but he gets the re-rolls. Oh. Got the focus. Oh, that is... That's at least two damage. It is two damage. So he's got a... Oof. Oh ho. This vulture droid's gotta do some work. Now, we're obviously as well. I think it's out. It's out, but don't oh. forget about the Ondor Oppressor does have shots on Gavin, so could we see Gavin go down? Oh, just the crit. Oh, he evaded it. No. I mean, a blank out and a direct hit would have been brutal. But this is it. This is what it comes down to. Had the, the iron, iron assembler assembler. for the... Uh, if he can do it, this will be the, w, the, this will be the draw. second time that the Iron Assembler has done this, if he can. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it. That's done it. Cheeky little yeah. baby, yeah. but that is braided down, and that is the second time on the channel that the Iron Assembly. Just count the uh, I ones. They are seriously I ones. They are worth their were points. They, were they the finishers, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, he did it for me against Wes a while back, and now he's done it for Mad Boss against Connor. Got those last two points, and as I said. They were literally about to close, turn the lights off on us, but at the end, 7 points to Connor, 12 points to Madbots. I do think another couple of turns, and it's quite possible it would have swung hard into Connor's favour there. Um, but you literally never know with this game exactly how it's going to end. Uh, but it would appear it's going to end with all of the tokens in the dice tray there. That's a, um, that's a, that's better red dice. Yeah, I mean he he really wishes he rolled those earlier. Um, Super but yeah, well, yeah, um, well done to Madbot. So fairly well flown for only the second time flying separatist. Just needs to tweak Grievous a bit, but those vultures really did work so hard there. Uh, but yeah, again, well done to Connor as well. Dice were just not in his favour, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would have been a very different game. But, Ben, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and do some commentary with us tonight. Oh, thank you very much, Phil, for having us on. It's great to uh, be back doing commentary again. Always, always love having you on board, mate, so hopefully we'll get you back on very soon. But guys, that is another video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. Again, as always, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.